Okay, hey everyone and welcome to a brand new Class 66 Rocks locomotive review. Now in this review I am taking a look at a very special locomotive. It is part of the National Railway Museum collection and it was named after a British Prime Minister many many years ago. Now my dad also had this locomotive um, when he was my age so I'm 28 now so in his 20s to 30s. Um, but then unfortunately he had to sell it and so what I did for Christmas I purchased him this locomotive um, because it was one that I'd been looking at for a while and I thought he'd really like it um, as a present so I got this particular locomotive for £85 off eBay um, because I'd watched many more besides that um, but been outbid every time so I was really happy to finally win the bid on it um, so it also runs with the current steam selection that we've got for the Devon part of our layout and um, once it's rebuilt so the Merchant Navies, the West Countries and the Battle of Britons um, so let's get on with the review then and have a look at what we've got today Okay, so as we can see today, we have a Hornby Battle of Britain, and it is Winston Churchill. So, as you, well, some of you may know, Winston Churchill was a very famous British Prime Minister many, many years ago. Um, so, this locomotive was named after him, and I think this particular locomotive, did it also pull his funeral train as well? Um, I'm sure it did. So, there's quite a few photos going around the internet of the funeral set that it pulled and um, when it was his funeral but like I say let's take a closer look at it okay so as you can see it is a Hornby locomotive and we have the Hornby, locomo Hornby logo just at the top just there so as you can see it is a BR462 Battle of Britain class locomotive the name is Winston Churchill as previously mentioned um, the length is 272 millimetres and as you can see it is part of the National Railway Museum collection NRM and the logo is just there and it is a special edition as well and it's also in double O gauge. So taking a look at the sides of the box. So on the side here you can see we have the item number which is R2385 BR462 West Country Class. Winston Churchill. Now I think the West Countries and the Battle of Britons are similar um, because they've got the slab sided casing. I mean I know some of them had the casing taken off eventually um, so they're sort of similar um, because I've got some West Countries as well Weymouth and Wilton and they are slab sized like this particular locomotive. Apologies for the light um, it's 5 to 11 in the morning um, Currently there's workmen outside digging the road up so I can't go out anywhere so I thought I might as well get on with this review. So we'll just take a quick look at the back of the box. So as you can see there we have an image of Winston Churchill during its heyday. So as you can see got a bit of information there. So it was officially named at a ceremony at Waterloo on September the 11th 1947 by Marshal of the Royal Air Force Lord Dowding and it says all Battle Britain class locos carried names of distinction but 34051 Winston Churchill is perhaps one of the best remembered. Um, it was shedded at Salisbury for mixed traffic duties and as you can see there's a bit of information about the National Railway Museum where you can find out more about the loco so I'll just let you have a read of that for a moment okay so let's get on with the review then now I'm not too sure if this locomotive is DCC ready either so it might be that we have to hardwire it so as you can see it's presented in Hornby's old style packaging um, it's not the block of ice or the ice cube however people wish to remember it by so we'll just 
undo this box and take the locomotive out. Okay, so we'll just take this card flap off here. So the first thing that we've got, I'm just going to place the box down, are the West Country Battle of Britain class locomotive and tender operating and maintenance instructions. So we will keep hold of these um, because obviously it tells us a bit about lubricating the loco and I think this is one that we're going after hardwire um, because there's no DCC instructions on where to put a decoder. I mean we have hardwired West Countries before now so um, it shouldn't take too long. Yes, uh, it also mentions television suppression now. All the ones that need hardwiring always mention the TV suppressor. So, like I say, we can do it. It is doable. Um, it might take about uh, half an hour to an hour or so to hardwire it um, and test it and just tidy all the wires up, etc. But it'll be worth it in the end. So that's the instructions. Okay, so let's get on to the loco itself then. So as you can see, it's presented in a foam tray. Um, it's covered with this tissue paper, as you can see. So if we just unfold the tissue paper and fold it back, like so. And we'll take the loco out of the box. So as you can see, we've got two holes on the back just there, just to put our hands through. Well, fingers should I say. So let's take the loco out first. And I've just dropped a bit of foam just there. Now the loco is going to be coming out in two sections. So first we've got the main half of the loco. So we'll just place that down on the floor. And we've also got the tender. So we'll just take that out of there, like so. And we'll just place the box to one side. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to connect the locomotive up. After I've just got all this foam out of it. Um, because there's bits of foam dotted all over the place here and um, I think it's just been put in to protect the locomotive actually so what I don't want to do is get all this foam jammed <laughs> so there's just one particular piece that does not want to come out aha there we go we've got it out okay so if some of you can hear like a chainsaw noise and um, that is seven tramp water outside as mentioned digging up the road and um, so I'm going to try and get on with the review while they're doing that because I don't think I can tell them to go out and be quiet because I doubt they'll listen to me okay so here we have the Hornby Battle of Britain class Winston Churchill uh, like I say apologies about the light um, it's quite bright outside and I've got the lights on just so we can do this review Okay, so starting with the front of the loco, we'll just level the bogey up there. So as you can see, we have the locomotive number 34051 on the front of the smoke box door. And also, wow, we have round sprung loaded buffers on this locomotive as well. Now there's no detailing on the front, so we will have to detail it, um, but as you can see, We've got the, is it called the streamline casing? Um, not entirely sure, but if you do know, please leave your comments below. So turning the loco round to the side now. So as you can see, we've got quite a lot of detail running down the side of the locomotive, um, like the riveting. So I can just see that badge just there. I'll bring the loco right in so the light doesn't blur it. As you can see it says Winston Churchill Battle of Britain class and we also have a Battle of Britain um, emblem just there. So I'll just clip this back onto here. So moving along now as you can see we've got the speedo cable just there and I'll just show you the front bogey and the wheels as well. So as you can see we've got four wheels on the front bogey and as you can see, there's gone a lot of effort into detailing these locomotives. And these are absolutely fantastic when they're running. They look so good. So moving along now, we can see we've got the, I think these vacuum pipes or the steam pipes. 
Um, but if you do know and are a Battle of Britain historian or maybe somebody who knows a lot about them, please leave your comments below, like I say, um, and I will reply to you. So as you can see, we have the locomotive number 34051 on the side just there, as well as 7P, and I think that says 5FA. So was that the locomotive destination um, or its shed code? Um, because I can actually see it on the front, no it's not on the front of the loco so that might actually be the shed code where it's based. But like I say, any information please leave your comments below and I will gladly reply to you. So moving along now to the tender, as you can see it's in the Lake Crest, British Royal Railways um, and the entire locomotive is in BR Green. So as you can see we've got the fake coal on the top of the tender just there so the tender just come undone so what I'll do I'll just clip it back in and we'll do the locomotive as a whole for this review now as you may have noticed on the Flying Scotsman review this is what I was mentioning so the Flying Scotsman had the new type of tender coupling um, connecting the tender to the locomotive so it's like on the wire like the DC C sort of chipped style I mean, it was also on a bracket as well. So, what we'll do, we'll just place this back in here. Okay, so turning the loco round to the back now. So, as you can see on the back, we have some are they ladders or steps, whatever you wish to describe them as. So that the I'm guessing it's so the driver or the fireman can climb up and do something with these here. Um, I'm not entirely sure what these are um, but if you do know please leave your comments below. Um, I'm guessing water maybe or is water at the front. Like I say I'm more of a diesel sort of enthusiast um, so my dad's mainly the steam enthusiast in the family even though I do like steam locomotives don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with them so, as you can also see again, we've got sprung loaded buffers on the left and right hand sides, and we have an NEM coupling pocket which we will leave on the locomotive. Okay, so I'll just place the loco down for a moment so I can turn it round to the other side for you. Um, I don't think Seven Trent took my hint to be quiet, or they haven't seen me filming this review, otherwise they'd have pretty gone quiet by now. But I'm Coping. <laughs> okay, so to, after turning the locomotive around to the other side, so as you can see, again on the tender, we've got the British Railways Lake Crest logo, and we've got six wheels on the tender. Moving across, we've got the locomotive number again, um, we've also got some cab windows, and the steam pipes, vacuum pipes. Um, I think one of these is a bit loose. Uh, so I'll have to put a spot of super glue on that I think um, when we come to detailing it. So moving across now, as you can see, I'm going to have to bring the loco in again aren't I? We have the Winston Churchill Battle of Britain class logo just there as well as the emblem located underneath. And as you can see on the slab sided body, you can see all the rivet holes now. When I said it was really detailed, um, this is what I meant. So as you can see, it looks like it's actually been done in square sections. Um, if there's a particular reason for that, please leave your comments below, as that would I'd be interested to find that out. So moving along now, as you can see again, there's a lot of detail gone into the locomotive, especially like on the wheels and the speedo cables, etc. Um, and you have to be really really careful that these don't get bent because I know we've had issues with the West Countries before now when we've gone to put the well gone to hardwire it and um, put it back on the track and we've accidentally slightly ever so slightly bent one of the coupling rods and then we've had to re-level it again just so the locomotive will run so as you can see again we've got the bogey on the front just here but obviously I showed you that on the other side. So let's take a look at the roof area. 
Okay, so as you can see, we've got the funnel on the top just there. Moving along, we've got the whistle, as you can see. And you can also see where the locomotive has been riveted or welded, whatever you wish to call it. So, as you can see, we have a panel on the top just here. Now, these usually on the new locomotive slide forwards, but this one doesn't slide whatsoever. And as you can see on the tender again, we have a bird's eye view of the coal just there. Okay, so let's just take the tender off for a moment. And I'm just going to show you inside the loco. So, with the Flying Scotsman, I couldn't really do this because obviously the tender wouldn't um, fully disconnect. But we did manage to see some of the details. So, as you can see in the Battle of Britain, we have an outstanding amount of detail. So, you've got your smoke box door your dials, um, levers and pre all the pressure gauges um, and the valves and whatnot inside the locomotive. So I just thought I would show you that quickly. So that is it basically. The Hornby Battle of Britain class Winston Churchill.